Why are you bringing so many bug men into the house lately? Jeez! Hey! What's up, my peoples? I'm Go here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Trojan Horse Hurricane. Uh, so here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging right up front here. We have some lovely artwork of Hurricane. His name is Hurricane Trojan Horse. On this side, we have Hurricane. On this side, Hurricane. Up top, just some green and yellow. On the bottom, more green, more yellow. On the back of the box, warning, don't eat anything in this box. That could be very bad for you. Bunch of silver logos, and that is a Basically it for the packaging. Then moving right along, here we have Hurricane. And first and foremost, I just wanted to say a big thank you to the good people at Bombaspeed.net for sending this out my way to take a look at. Thank you very much. But yeah, here is Waspinator, and this is pretty much like a uh like a movie Waspinator. It's basically Waspinator with an Earth alt mode as opposed to his regular buggy alt mode. And here he is in his robot mode. He is packed in robot mode. And uh, yeah, I really did the design. I think he looks quite, quite good. But let's get in close here so we can take a look. Not, not, not at that. Just poking out at us. So let's take a look at the noggin. Put some eyes out with that thing. Anyway, take a look at the noggin. Nice head sculpt. It's a nice waspinatory head sculpt, you know. Definitely a different design, but very much still invoking that waspinator look. Got that nice transclearance plastic there for the eyes. Looks good in my opinion. Got the black and yellow. And you got that nice transparent plastic there on the chest. You have some tampograph details throughout as well. Got some bits of yellow. Some nice silver, lots of silver on this. Overall, lots of detail. Some nice paintwork going on there. Don't know what that's all about. Don't I don't know what that's all about though. That you know, he only needs one stinger, and that's you know what. That's just you know, yeah, whatever. But <laughs> you got the yellow and black going down the legs. His toesies, his heelys. And over the back, you can see it's a very clean transformation. You just got the blades hanging out back here. But overall. Nicely done design, in my opinion. Now, articulation-wise, what we got going on here is a head on the ball joints. We have lots of wiggly waggly. Can look up a lot. Do total squirrel. Can look down. Head can do a full 360. Um, arms can do a full 360. Just be mindful of the shoulder pads here. You also have forward and backward movement on that shoulder. You have inward and outward. Um, these shoulder pads, you can have them down if you want. Just get a little bit of clearance. You kind of do what you want there. Um, you do have bicep rotation. Um, you have... Nice deep elbow bend there. You do have multiple joints if you kind of untap things. If you untap this little side piece here, the forearm piece, you can get like a total double jointed elbow going on there. So it just depends on how you have those joints working. Um, you do have wrist rotation. The wrist is actually on a ball joint. So you have a little bit of wiggly waggly, some inward and outward. The hands can open up. You do have the thumb on a ball joint and each finger is on a hinge. Um, you do have waist rotation. Uh, you do have an ab crunch. A little bit of crunchage going on here. And you do also have some side-to-side -side movement. You kind of see that working in there. There's little pistons going on, which is a neat touch. Um, as far as legs go, the legs can go forward that far. You can do them high kicks back. I mean, the backpack's going to kind of get in the way, but you can get way far back outward. Pretty much the full splits. A thigh rotation. You do have a double jointed knee, so you have a nice range of movement there as far as the feet go. Um, they can move up, they can move down. There's no rotation, but you do have lots of ankle tiltage. And those toes, you can kind of splay them out, bring them in, you can kind of do whatever you want there. And even the heel pieces on hand, you can bring that down to help you to support any posing. Now, as far as accessories go, you get his blaster here. See, just done in black and yellow with kind of a dark gray plastic here. That kind of a stinger bayonet going on. Nice little design. And you can 
have him wielding this weapon. That's the typical tab in the slot of the palm. Method of weapon holding. And you just plug it in, plug it in. Wrap his fingers around it, and he can pew pew bang bang, pew pew bang bang, and all of that good stuff right there. You also get two different effects parts here. You have kind of a regular kind of blast going, and then you have one that looks like he's kind of shooting a, uh, like a little missile, a little stinger. So you have your options, and as always, options are good. And this will just plug onto the barrel. Now there is, you do have to be mindful because there is, I don't know if you can see, there's a little, a little cutout here that's meant for the bayonet. So you can plug that on, like so. And you can have him pew pewing and bang banging to his heart's content. Now I'm going to make an executive decision here, and I don't consider this bluish worthy. It's more like a pew, not so much a bluish. But more of a pew, so you know eh, we're not gonna we're not gonna get a bluish here. I don't feel this is bluish worthy. You know, it's just I don't know. It's just not doesn't doesn't scream bluish. It doesn't scream bluish, so I'm not gonna scream bluish. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Executive decision. I'm making them. Now, as far as storage for the weapon goes in robot mode, uh, we can plug it into his uh, his butt and kind of give him his stinger. Um, also, a note: we can also you know we can splay these blades out. You can have those however you want. Make them look all cool, do as you wish, but there is a slot right here, and you got a tab right here on the gun. You can just take this, and it will just snap into place there, and we can give him his stinger, you know, and it does have a joint here. It does have joints to work with here, so you gotta move it up, down. You can move this up and down as well. You can do that. You can, you know, plug the effects part right there, so now he's pew-pewing out of his butt. You know what? Hey, things and stuff you can do, if you want to do it. Wasp and the but the girls pew! So there you have that. And now for Comparus. On. Here he is with uh, MPM Bumblebee, just so you can kind of get a sense of the scale here. If you want a measurement, Waspinator stands at about six and three quarter inches tall. Uh, here he is with Masterpiece Beast Wars Megs. Just so you can see how that works out. And here he is with the uh, Kingdom Megatron. Again, just so you can see how that works. Give you a sense of scale here, give you a sense of size. And here he is with Kingdom Waspinator. Again, just so you can see how that works out. And that looks like little baby wish papa. Oh, papa. Oh, papa. So there you go. So that is basically it for the robot mode, and I think it looks quite good. I very much like the design, but let's get down to transformation, shall we? Let's! So the first thing we need to do is work on his backpack here. So you're just going to untab this section and just swing it over to this side like that. Going to come up under here. We're going to bring this entire assembly up on this hinge and then rotate these sections up on either side like that. Then we can bring this down and you basically just want everything sitting flush like so. So now we're gonna get started on the leg. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to bring the foot down. You wanna take this little spike here, just bring that back, take the heel and bring that down. This end is quite snug on mine. Bring that down, and then you're going to bring this entire assembly here. That just tabs in right there. Just bring that up, and then just swing this down. Bring that up like that, and you got that done. You're going to come here to this side. If it hasn't done it for you already, just untab this little panel from the side of his leg, and then all of this will come up. And just kind of leave that just sitting there for now because now we need to get his uh, all this thigh armor out of the way so you can bring this out. Now this panel here, all of these panels right here, you don't want to pull them up. You're basically going to push them. You're going to push them out. So just push them to the side and that'll undo and you can swing this out to the side. All this is on a double hinge. So just rock this up. And just get that out of your way for now. So now we can get all this situated. So just swing that out. And get this up. And you can rotate the leg out to the side. All of this is on a double hinge. So just bring this up. This section here will just swing out. 
and sit flush right there. And then once you've done that, you bring all of this up so it lines up right here. Next thing you want to do, um, the easiest way I found to do this, this is all on a slider. You want to slide this in. The easiest way I found to do this is just kind of bring the foot in, you know, just kind of bring it down just so you can kind of grab hold of all this a little bit more firmly because this is kind of tight. So just swing all this in, then just kind of give it a little wiggle, 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 and it will just kind of click itself into place, get everything lined up, and that's how you want that looking. And then you can just bring this all back, and this can just rotate down. You can bring these toes out. These will just be fins, and you got that going on. So now we'll get all this situated here. One thing we can do now is we can actually like disengage this upper part of his body, and it just helps to get things out of the way. So what we're going to do here is just kind of want to swing this section out just a little bit so you can get this section up and over. This is all a double hinge, so just bring this up, extend all of this out like that, and use that double hinge to bring all of that in then you can just bring this the rest of the way up you can just kind of leave this swung out like that so now we can take all this and bring it up and that will just seat itself right in there you want to make sure that this section here sits behind this panel because there's a little cutout for it and just flip out that panel there lots of panels there's going to be a lot of panels we're working with here. He's very panel-y. So once we have that done, we can take all this, swing it around. And you can see there's a little tab slot connection right there, a little hook tab for this. So just take that, pop that into place, like so. Just leave that kind of hanging out. Try to get everything as lined up as you can. And this panel will come down. Again, you got some tabs and slots that are lined up. You'll probably be fiddling with this a little bit more as you get through the transformation, but that's where it's supposed to sit. And we basically have that side all done. So we can just bring this little fin down. There you go. Now, second verse is just like the first. And now that we got both legs done, what we're going to do now is we're going to shift the thighs down. This can take a bit of doing, but shift them down. And they will shift down. There we go. Get the one side. And then just get the other side pulled down. There we go. And once we have done that, you can see his little uh his little his his, his front stinger has a little notch for it, so we can even poke out in alt mode. It's weird, it's so weird, but anyway. So now we want to just get all this together. So the best way to do it is just kind of start from the bottom and work your way up. So start by connecting this. Then get this little hook tab under here. It's just a lot to connect. It's a lot of connection points. Like that. And then you have this one right here. So just kind of drop one side over the other, like so. Then you got a little hook tab in here. So just kind of get that lined up as best you can. And just kind of set that into place. Come back here. Get all this nice and squozen. Like that, and we got that all done. So now we can start getting his upper body all transformed up. So this section here is on a double hinge, so just extend all this out. Again, we'll get all that sitting all nice and level a little bit later. So once we have done that, you want to extend this whole cockpit section here. You just kind of want to angle it up and then just pull it out. You can see you got multiple hinges there to work with. So we got that going on. So now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, take these side sections here. Just extend these out like so. And on my copy anyway, these are on transclearing hinges. And on my copy anyway, these are a little bit too tight. So do exercise some caution here. So bring that out, and then you want to take this section here, bring that up, and swing this panel out, like so. Get that all extended. So what you're going to do with his head here is the whole, his, the whole base of his neck, you just want to pop up like that, and then right above it, this is on a hinge, like the neck proper, 
So you're going to bring this up so it's looking like that. And that's how you want that looking. And then you can just take this and just bring the head all the way down. Yeah, these green panels right here, as you can see, they're on they're on sliders. So you just want to slide these back. You don't want to bring the arms down and just slide these back. Bring that up and just slide that back. They have kind of sharp points also, so be careful. You know I love it when my toys stab me. That's always that, that's always fun. But anyway, just bring this up. I'm gonna line all that up right there like that and then you can bring this all the way back and that will just get everything right and we'll just clip itself in right there apparently I don't have everything right I thought I did there we go snap that in right there and that's what you're looking at we're not going to be securing any of this just yet because we still have some more to do Okay, so now I get the armular region all squared away. Um, hopefully you can see what's happening here. Also, get you want to get these purple pieces out of the way. So, you basically want to bring the arm in. You then want to rotate the shoulder itself in. So, basically, you want these two screws here facing the inside. Then you're going to rotate the arm at the bicep. So, this green section is now facing the back. So, what's going to happen here is you're going to take his hand. You want to rotate it around. Just want to open the hand all the way up. That will give you the clearance to take this panel and swing it around. It's not a ball joint as well. Just swing it around. This will come around and this will sit right there. Then you can rotate the hand so the palm is facing forward. And you can close the fingers back up. Pull back up to a fist. And that is how you want that looking right there. So once you have done that, you're going to come back down here to the shoulder region, and this section right here will come out. You just kind of want to rotate this around, get that out of your way. And what you're going to do here is you're going to collapse all of this down. So it's sitting like that. Hopefully you can see that. And then you're going to take the arm and just bring it back and fold it up. Bring it all the way back again, like work with this little side panel also. So bring it all the way back and fold that up as tight as you can. So it is sitting in there just like that. So again, we'll get all this secured in a little bit, but this is basically how you want those arms situated. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so there we go. We got both arms situated. So now what we can do is get some other stuff situated. So what's going to happen here is we want to take these purple sections and bring them up and over this. You want to make sure that this armature is sitting underneath where the slider is. So once you get that in place, just kind of push it in. And that's where you want that sitting, like that. And there is a little tab slot connection for it right here. So just get this in place and tab it in. And hopefully it will cooperate. Sometimes it doesn't want to. There we go. Just get everything sitting just right. And there you go. You got that side all done. You got to do the same thing on the other side. Again, make sure that these are sitting where they are supposed to as well. Make sure everything is in place. Places, everyone! Places! go bring that around make sure that is seated where it's supposed to lots of ball joints and lots of panels the one thing about this figure lots of ball joints lots of panels and it's honestly quite quite fiddly okay we got that in there it's working now okay so now what we're gonna do is uh, more fiddling that's basically what we're gonna do now so take this panel you can see there's a little tab that will go up under this panel just get that now we can get these sections situated make sure that this is straightened all the way out as best you can again we'll get everything sitting a bit more flush once we get everything else in place there you go. Try to get all this sitting as flush as possible. So now we have a section here that's a bit fiddly as well. So basically you want to get this little transparent piece in this groove here. And the best way to do it is just kind of go in like at an angle 
and just kind of slide it up and in and this little tab also that sits in there so hopefully you get everything sitting nice and flush like that once you've done that you basically kind of want to hold this in place while you're getting this side in place because if not they will undo one another and that will get frustrating so there you go once you do that that should hopefully seat itself into place like so which it has not a little tab there we go a little tab you want that to pop in and you want that to hook together like that and there we go we got those sides together hooray so now what we're going to do is we're going to take these little green panels here just flip these out like so and now we can start getting all of this situated and make sure these panels again i told you these panels were going to be we're going to be messing with these quite a bit because they're not going to stay in place, but we'll get it all in place in a little bit. Then we'll get this all seated where it's supposed to go. So basically now we're going to take all this, collapse it back, and drop all this in like so, yeah, like so, and just drop this all in, drop this all down. We have tab slot connections up there. So get everything lined up as best as you can. on either side is it fiddly yes is it worth it eh. <laughs> I go back and forth with this figure there we go try to get everything situated again these little panels here are gonna mess with you because they just like to Get everything as situated as you can. Get everything kind of squozing as best you can for now. And there we go. That's what you pretty much want to end up with. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we want to take these sections here and just open these up all the way. Open that up and open that up. And these panels will also hook together as well, like so. So you want to bring these up. And all of this will just come up and under. You got little tabs that will go underneath this panel here. Again, lots of lots of tabs and lots of maneuvering you have to do of panels. Just gonna get this up and under and just pop that into place. I think it take a bit of doing because again, you got a lot to kind of line up here. It's doable. It's not the most fun, but it's doable. There we go. There we go. That's how you want that looking there. Same thing on the other side. Just kind of gonna pull things out a little bit just to help you. And there we go. That side went in a lot easier. You may have to clip these two sides back together. Just get it squeezing. Squeeze, squeeze. There we go. Pop it all together. Get it nice and squeezing. And we're at the home stretch. Okay, so now we're going to take these sections here and just rotate them around. There's a little landing gear that we can flip out. Same thing here, just rotate that around. Flip that out. Just kind of angle those how you want. You also have a landing gear under here. So just flip that out as well. Bring that up and out. And there we go. Now, as far as this section goes, you can see it's sitting off center. So you just want to rotate this entire assembly in. And that will center it out. And last thing we need to do is just open up these blades, straighten them all out. Open it up, straighten it all out. Like so. And there you go. There you have. Hurricane, a.k.a. Waspinator, in his alt mode. Actually, a pretty smooth spin there. But there he is in his alt mode. Not the most fun transformation. A lot of fiddle factor. This toy definitely has a, a bit of an issue getting out of its own way, clearances and all that, but it comes together pretty well. I don't consider it a nightmare transformation, but it definitely has a high fiddle factor, though. Just getting, you know, all those panels lined up and everything, you know, it's, 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 it's a, it's a thing.
it's a process, not exactly a fun one, you know, not a nightmare transformation. It's like, it's, it's like borderline a nightmare transformation. It's like, it's on the cusp, on the cusp of a nightmare transformation. It's right there, but not totally, you know, crossing that line as far as I'm concerned anyway, but it does come together quite nicely when it's all said and done. Let's get in closer so we can take a look at these details. You can see that nice transparent plastic there for the cockpit section. You got some nice tampograph details. You got Wasp right there. And at 9686. Clever. You see Danger back there. You see the double propellers there, rotors, whatever you want to call them. I call them propellers just because it bugs people when I call them propellers. <laughs> you can see that gunmetal gray right up in there. Get that going on back there. Now, as far as these go, they don't spin freely. They do spin, but they don't spin freely. They do have friction with them, so, you know, you're not going to get any kind of free spinning with them, unfortunately. But that's probably better, because then in robot mode, they'd be all flopping around. So, better they have some friction. But overall, I think it's a quite nice design, though. I think it all does come together quite nicely. There is the top. There is the bottom. You can see everything is concealed. There's no robot parts to be seen. Uh, you do have these little landing gear. They do roll, but, you know, you can't really tell these roll. He is more sliding than anything. So, you know, still a sliding, flying, waspy thing. And for comparison, here he is with Waspinator. Here's Waspinator with Waspinator, just so you can see. <laughs> How the two look side by side. Now, again, measurement-wise, from end to end, uh, Waspinator here, or Hurricane, measures in at almost 8 inches long. Now, as far as storage for the weapon goes, yes, you can store this little stinger blaster here. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take this section and just rotate this all the way around like that. And you have these two tabs right here. So you're going to flip this landing gear in. And you have two slots right up here, right on the nose. And this will just plug itself in, thusly and thusly, and just sit right there. And I guess then this will serve as the landing gear. And you got that going on. And then you can just kind of fold this up and have it sitting flush right there. So, hey, things you can do, things you can do, hooray for things you can do, yay. Yay for doing things. So, there you go. So, there you have Hurricane. And, uh, yeah, he's a mixed bag. He is definitely a mixed bag. Um, the robot mode looks really good. The alt mode looks really good. Um, love the design. I really love the design. Love what they, uh, what they did here with this. The transformation, though, eh, the transformation is definitely fiddly. There is a high fiddle factor here. Again, not to that nightmare transformation level, but it's on the cusp. It's almost there. Um, getting the back end together, that's not so much of a chore, but getting that front end together, like with all those panels and everything, that can be kind of a chore. That's, that's where really the high fiddle factor is. So, not a total nightmare transformation, but it's not a fun transformation either. So, you know. It looks real good in both of its modes, just that transformation, that engineering could have been, you know, a bit smoother. Great in concept, but the execution needed a bit more work. But hey, for this company's first figure, it's still a solid effort as far as I am concerned, so... There you go. Now, if you would like this figure for yourself, you can pick it up from BombusB.net. I'll put a link to their site in the description down below so you can check that out. You can also pick up this figure from BigBadToyStore.com. As always, linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. You can also check out my third-party Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it, so don't forget to check out M Games, check out Love, Peace, Paranormal, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below, and I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, there is the Trojan Horse Hurricane, and this is MGO saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be geek! Be proud! Bomb in your face! Waspinator, what's going on here? What's up with this getup? Oh, Waspinator just wanted to try to blend in a little more with the humans. Waspinator, you can blend in with a tree if your alt mode was a leaf. Waspinator doesn't get it. Exactly. 
Now, now seriously, what's going on?